In this video, we're going to be setting up NeoVim for Java development. So as always, I'm going to be leaving a link to this article in the description below, as well as a link to my config here. And uh, if you're interested in this color scheme, I also have a repo for color schemes. All right. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to go through all of the available features here and all of the things that this is capable of doing. And then I'm going to show you how to uh, set up the configuration yourself and what commands you're going to want to run to do everything that I do in the video. All right. So the first thing, and I'm just going to go down this list here. The first thing that you're going to notice is the syntax highlighting. And if you've ever done any Java development in Vim or NeoVim before, you probably noticed that the syntax highlighting is very subpar. Um, this really improves upon that. Now, TreeSitter does other things too, but for now, I really just use it for its uh, syntax highlighting. Um, and by the way, this is just some toy project that I um, uh, was working on when I first learned Spring Boot. So it's, you know, it's, I think it's just a good thing. Um, it's just the only Java code I really had lying around. All right, so what we're going to do is go to definition next. So you'll see that we have auto wired in a service here. And that service has a method in it called get all topics. And so if we want to see what that method, um, you know, the implementation of that method, we can just do GD. And we'll see where it's defined and all of the code uh, under that to see what it does. Now, if you want to go back, you can press Control O. And let me enable this so you can see all the keys that I'm pressing. So you can press Control O to go back. So GD to go in, Control O to go back. What you can also to do is uh, go to reference. So if we GD, and then if we GR, and there's only one reference, and you can see that because right here with the code lens, you can see there's only one reference to this method here. Then we can GR and go directly to it. Now imagine that something is referenced all over the place, like um, this topic class here. What you can do is you can do GR on top of that, and then you'll get a little list down here um, of all the places that topic is referenced. So we'll jump to this one here, and you can see, okay, that's where it is, right? Um, so that's just one of the many references to the topic. All right, the next thing we'll do is formatting. So if I add a bunch of white space here, and maybe some here, and I don't know, maybe some here. All right, now I have it to um, format on save, but you could also turn this off and just format on like a key press or some other hotkey if you wanted to. But so if I save, it will just format the file for me. So it'll make your code just look a lot better if you know, you're in the habit of you know, not writing very structured code. Um, all right, so diagnostics. So diagnostics, you kind of expect this out of any LSP. If say I just, you know, um, let's just create some errors here. If I do that, um, you'll notice that it's red there and the request map cannot be resolved to a type. Um, that's because, you know, it doesn't exist. So if we, you know, undo all this, you'll see, okay, you know, that error is fixed. So you can see errors, warnings, info, all those kinds of things. All right. Um, so that's basically diagnostics now hover. So hover, let's find something to hover over, um, that will give us a big Java doc. If you want to see like a Java doc of something, or if you just want to see like, um, what it takes as inputs. So first we'll do this. And you can kind of see the Java doc here. If you do control F or control B, I think, um, or no, yeah, control F is this key. <laughs> so control F will go down in the Java doc and control B will go up. All right. So the other thing is let's go back over here and let's take a look at, I don't know, maybe this, you can see, all right, that's like the link to, um, or the full path to the get all topics method. All right, and that was just uh, capital K for hover. All right, and the next thing we'll do is refactor and rename. So let's go over here. This thing has 16 references and we want it to be updated everywhere when we rename it. So we'll do space and I'm gonna show you the, um, like the actual commands for this, but I'm doing this through which key so I can kind of remember and see all of my commands. So I'm gonna press L for LSP. And then I'm going to press um, R for rename, capital R for rename. So that's right here. And you can see this in my config. You can see all the commands that I'm running. So capital R. And now it'll ask me for a new name. And I'm just going to put topic two and press enter. All right. And now it told me that um, six buffers were changed and to do WA or write all to save the changes to the disk. 
So I'm just going to do that. And uh, really fast, before I do that, you can see that we have a bunch of errors all over the place right now. Um, and that's because we didn't do that yet. So we'll do WA and those errors should go away. And now all the references, if we do GR, everything should be referenced as topic two. All right, and you can see that um, the name even changed here because if you know Java, you know that you want the name to match the, uh, the file name to match the name of the class. All right, so the next thing we'll do, and this isn't really LSP specific, but it's searching through files and searching through text. All right, so let's do a uh, space, and then I'm gonna do S for search. And this is just my which key, but like you'll be able to find all of the commands. I'm gonna link the commands that which key is actually running at the bottom of the uh, article. All right, so we're gonna do F, and this is gonna look for a particular file. So imagine I have a build Gradle in here. So if I do build.gradle, all right, I found that file and I can jump directly to it. All right, now if I wanna find topic two, for instance, or just some text throughout my project, I can do S, T, and now we'll search for uh, topic two. All right, and now these are probably the 16 references to topic two, so we'll just jump to one of them. All right, and that's searching through text. Now the other thing we'll do is uh, quick fix, and also COC actions is kinda of like um, the quick fix is kind of in, encompassed in that as well. So we'll jump over here and we're gonna get rid of both of these import statements here. All right, and that should give us a couple errors here. And now what we'll do next is we'll come over here and we'll do space L and Q. And so that's a quick fix. Um, that's just running COC quick fix, just so you know, and just so you can see, like these are all the commands that I'm running. So if you wanna do them yourself, they're, they're right there. Um, all right, and now this one, space LQ, and now I quick fix that one. Um, instead of a quick fix, you can just do uh, COC actions. So if I do space LA for actions, uh, you can, it'll ask you for like a bunch of things, like if you wanna, you know, do whatever, I don't know, like organize imports, but what we would be interested in here is usually the top one, which is just importing it, and that's like the quick fix for, for this example at least. All right, the other thing I wanna go over is Lombok. So Lombok, if you don't know, like if you just do like really, really basic Java development, um, uh, or if you're just learning Java, you probably do things like, okay, like if, and this is something you can do um, here. I'll, I'll kind of show you what I mean. So if I get rid of data here, all right, and that's something provided by Lombok. Um, and then if I do space LA for actions, I can create getters and setters um, for everything, right? So let's see, generate getters and setters. All right, so select what to generate, all, cancel, um, getter or setter, right? Or setter or getter. And I'm just gonna say all, all right? And then it'll ask me the fields that I wanna do it for. I'm just gonna say all again. All right, and now I have my getters and setters, right? So this is like how you get the ID because you know it's private. And uh, these are like the public methods to access the data or set the data. So we're gonna get rid of that because what you can actually do is you can use Lombok instead. Um, just by doing at data, and it provides a two string method as well and a hash code and all that kind of stuff. Um, and you can just pull in data and what it'll do, and it also is this no args constructor here. What it'll do is it'll set up uh, accessor, uh, getters and setters for name, description, and ID here. So you'll automatically from this from this, any object you instantiate, you'll have access to ID, name, and description. Um, same thing goes for this no args constructor. Like if I did an all args constructor, and this isn't really a video about Lombok, but you could do all args constructor, args constructor, right? And then you probably wouldn't need this thing down here, but this one's a little bit different, so yeah. Anyway, if you want Lombok to work, what you're gonna need to do is you're gonna need to, and I think this is really the end of kind of all the features. So what you're gonna need to do is you're gonna need to, and we're gonna skip debugging for now. Um, I'm gonna do a video in the future about how to do debugging in Java. I do actually have that working with Vim Spectre. Uh, and Vim Dap is also another thing that you might wanna check out. But again, that'll be in the future. Um, this video also kind of implies, cause I'm using COC um, Java, that you're using COC. Um, I have a video and a blog post about how to set that up. It's pretty simple, and once you get it set up, it's just like a command like um, coc install Java, right? And then you, you pretty much have everything that I have right here uh, besides tree sitter. 
So Lombok, yeah. So to get this Lombok thing to work, the thing I was just showing you a second ago, um, what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to, um, I recommend just kind of installing it in a place where um, that makes sense that you can use across operating systems. So um, besides maybe Windows. So just sudo mkdir user local share and then just create a place for Lombok. And then I have a wget just to pull down the jar and toss it in there. Um, after that, you can go down to your COC settings and you'll know what that means after you go through the video about COC. But your COC settings, you're just going to want to point um, the VM args uh, for the JVM. Um, and you're just going to want to point the Java agent here to user local share Lombok uh, jar. Or it'll say Lombok, another, another directory there for Lombok. All right. So that's how to get Lombok set up, which is kind of a pain. And I know some people are going to want that because writing out getters and setters is, you know, um, it's too much boilerplate. It's too much ceremony. All right. So the other things that you're going to need for this are you're going to need NeoVim uh, greater than or equal to 0.5 and preferably the newest version possible of NeoVim because TreeSitter is pretty bleeding edge. After that, you're going to want to install um, TreeSitter here and then just install this into um, either a Lua file that you can bring in. So I'll show you what that looks like in one of my projects. I'll just jump over here. All right, and uh, we'll go to another project or how I'm bringing this in. So treesitter.lua, so I just, say, I just specify a Lua file in my init.vim and then inside there, I just have this set up here. So this is the one you should be interested in here at the top. All right. Now after that, you, you should just have all of the syntax highlighting as long as you're using the newest version of NeoVim. If you want to get the newest version of NeoVim, you can click over on my repo and I have some instructions on how to install it for Mac um, and Arch. Now these are both the latest that should give you the newest stuff. Now Ubuntu, um, I haven't found the right link for that yet, but I think there's a PPA out there and uh, I'll, I'll probably update this soon. All right, so again, you're just gonna wanna install COC Java, um, but that should be pretty obvious after going through the, C the video and blog post on COC. Uh, we went over Lombok, so let's go over some of these commands. Now, how am I getting it to work? I have a video on which key, which is kinda like this menu down here. Um, but what you can do is you can just map these to basically whatever you want, but these are all the commands. So that line action that I did earlier, I have mapped to LA. So that's all of these actions. Um, for definition, go to definition. So like if you go to, whoops, let's go over here. So it's more obvious. So if we want to like go to definition for get course here and GD, what I'm really doing is I'm just calling COC definition. Same for references, um, type definitions is basically the same thing. Um, COC rename, uh, that rename and refactor, that was that guy right here. That's this command right here. Um, declarations is basically the same as implementations. Jumping around, it's just kind of go to like how it's like definition and references and stuff. Um, like if you had like a um, an interface and you wanted to see what implemented it, you would use this, right? Uh, COC format, I have that set up to do on save. If you want to set it up for on save, um, we can jump back over here and look at my COC settings. So all you would have to do is, I think I have something format on save, yeah. COC preferences format on save file types and just specify Java as one of them. If you don't specify Java as one of them, uh, you'll actually have to call it, which you might actually want that. All right, um, fix current, yeah, code lens. Um, so yeah, I didn't really talk much about code lens, but if you see all this virtual text here, that's all code lens. And what you're gonna need to do to actually get that to work is you're gonna need to, um, I have another thing here. So regularly enable code lens and then enable it for Java references. And I think you could actually do it for implementations as well. So we'll just set that to true. And now if something, um, if you, you can see how many things like implement a particular uh, interface. So that's what you see when we're over here and let's jump to uh, one that's, referenced a lot. So topic two, that's 16 references, that's code lens. Um, and specifically that particular uh, references code lens enabled. All right. 
Um, this is just jumping between diagnostics. I probably won't show that. If there's an error, you can kind of just jump directly to the error. That's another one. Um, you can also list diagnostics out. Um, I don't think I'm going to get much good stuff from that. So if I do COC list right now, and then if I do dot, whoops, diagnostics, you can kind of see that we have some warnings down here. And this is actually a fuzzy finder. So I'll just, whoops, I'm not really sure where that took me. But either, either, either way, it's, you know, just your diagnostics. Um, I don't really use that that much. There's also the outline, so we can do COC, outline, or no, it's not COC outline, it's, it's COC list, outline. And you can kind of go through everything here, like fields, methods, things like that. This is a controller, so it's just full of methods here. But you can kind of jump through the outline like that, and it's a fuzzy uh, search as well. So if you have a really big file, that might be useful. Uh, symbols, so things like that. Uh, if you want to update COC, like if you want to like get the newest version of COC Java or all of your other um, extensions, you can do COC update. Uh, same thing for disable and enable. Um, if you want to turn off like the, I didn't even show the completion, but if you do like course, uh, we'll do course service here. And you can see this little LS there, so we'll do you can see this little ls here and that says for language server and then we'll just do like dot and then um i don't know what was one of the methods get all courses or get courses or whatever like they'll show up so that's just the auto completion um but you know we kind of expected that to work all right so yeah this is the code lens stuff um this is the stuff to get lombok to work i also have a link to uh coc java and tree sitter here at the bottom uh, tree sitter is kind of a new project so uh, expect like some bugs but honestly just like you can see this file here just the syntax highlighting alone is worth it for tree sitter right and you can see that here so also the um the color scheme that you see here i'm kind of collecting a bunch of them here in this repo so this is one that's like dark plus like vs codes but i also have ones for one dark and nord as well um, and then people are adding theirs uh, when they get the, you know, when they feel, I guess, inspired to do so. So you can uh, do that if you want to. But I think that's pretty much everything I wanted to do for, um, for this video about Java. I think you don't really need much more than this. There's a few other things like uh, Vim Spectre, and I said I'll be doing a video on that in the future. I actually did a live stream to get it to work. Um, it was a little bit difficult to get going, but that's why I think it deserves its own video. So that's pretty much it for this video. If you want to support me over on Patreon, you can do that. Um, we also have a Discord you can check out. Um, and I'll see you guys in the next video.